Welcome back to Hexus TV at CBIT 2010. Back at the Intel booth and I'm here with Karen Regis, who's the Director of Consumer Client Marketing. Karen, welcome to Hexus TV. Thank you. Okay. It's quite a fancy sounding job title, so what do you actually do at Intel? <laughs> Thanks. I, I never thought of it as a fancy job title, but um, essentially what I do is, um, from the business unit point of view, the, P, the product group, um, we actually put the consumer spin onto the product features and benefits. So uh, we are that first translation that takes all the little bits and bytes and turns it into a benefit-oriented statement that the end user will hear. So how do you define Core i7 in layman's terms? Well, Core i7 is really smart, it's adaptive, it's the ultimate in smart performance that's available from our new 2010 core processor family line. Okay, and that family's been augmented by some new mobile chips. First you've got a new Atom chip come in, and you've also got Arundel. And you can tell I'm a geek because I speak in yeah, code names. Yeah, you speak code names. Yeah, so Excellent. what's the benefit of having new chips, Atom chips and Arundel and Clarkdell? Okay, well the, the Atom chips um, were the trails, not the dales. Um, but yeah, the, the new Atom chips that we launched on, on January um, 4th of this year um, really have higher level of integration, a whole new partitioning of the platform that allows them to fit into smaller packages. Uh, we see a increase in performance, but the big deal here is really the smaller packaging allowing for, um, and, and lower power, uh, allowing for really nice uh, ergonomic and, and small designs um, with great battery life. Okay. What about Core i3, the new Core i3 chips? Well, yeah, so we had launched our 45 nanometer based um, Nehalem products back in August and September, respectively, for the desktop and mobile of 2009. In January 2010, what we did is we introduced the Dales. Clarkdale, Arendale, desktop and mobile. Um, they, what we did with that is that on the mobile side, we introduced products in the i7 space, the Core i5, and the Core i3 space as well. This is the first time that we saw the Core i3 actually come to market, was based on this new Westmere um, product. And on the desktop side, uh, we had new products in the Core i5 and the i3 space that we introduced. A total of 17 new smart processors in all. You are the best person to answer this next question. Can you explain Core i3, Core i5, and Core i7 branding? Because it's, we're asked that question ourselves many, many times. Um, it's pretty simple, really. Okay. It's good, better, best. I mean, the Core i3 really represents smart performance. Um, when you jump up to Core i5, what you get is smart performance with a boost. With our Intel Turbo Boost technology that allows that adaptive performance increase um, on the fly. It really adapts to what you need to do, whether it's running multiple threads or running you know, just one core very, very fast. And then when you jump up to i7, the core i7, that's when you really get the ultimate in this smart performance. They're all smart, you get a little bit more in terms of capability as you go up that stack. Okay. Well that is fairly simple actually. <laughs> uh, so Intel's introduced a number of new chips. Which other new features and benefits can we expect this year? Or is this year a year of transition before we see the next architecture come in? No, no, we're, we're not done for the year. I mean, we've only you know, launched more than 20 processors. Only 20. Okay. Uh, more than 20, 22, 23, I think, because we just introduced the uh, N470 for the... The, at the Atom, I know that one. So, and, and uh, it, we have some more stuff up our sleeve. Um, in the enthusiast space for the desktop gamer market, we'll have our six core product that we talked about today. That's Westmere based, six cores of performance, 12 virtual cores as seen by the operating system. So lots of excitement there. Okay, that's up from four cores and eight threads presently. So well, if we... Not, not quite. Remember, the Dales that we introduced in January, those are our two core parts. So we went from, on 32 nanometer from uh, dual core processors and jumped to six. In terms of mid-range platforms and CPUs, will that again just be a continuation or again, will you introduce more chips? No, no, more, more, more. <laughs> is more always better? Um, if it's serving a specific market, it is. If, if, it's, if it's just, you know, to keep on a treadmill, it's not. But specifically what we have coming up, I talked about the six core beast that we have coming out this spring. And then in, in the summer, what you'll see is those ultra low voltage pro products that uh, Intel has. We introduced some in the performance um, area of our roadmap in January. We'll be bringing that down into the transactional part of the roadmap. And what that means in real English is that it's going to be those ultra low volt 
um, uh, processors that allow ultra thin systems offered at price points that are going to hit consumer mainstream price points. So a consumer is going to be able to get some really cool new designs with Intel's latest technology inside them this summer. So you've talked about this six core beast. We know it's Golf Town or 980X, hopefully, when it's retailed. You've got a wafer just here. Can we have a look? Yeah, sure. Okay, let's have a look. So how many chips have we got on there, roughly? <laughs> I, is don't, it? I don't know. You can see that um, each chip has six cores. You can tell which part is the core and which part is the cache. Okay. Um, I'll let you do the counting, though. Uh, you probably are less jet-lagged than I am at this point. Okay, I'll see you back in a couple of weeks then. <laughs> And is that all made possible by the new architecture because 32 nanometers saves power? So we've got Westmere. Will we see that then pervade the whole desktop and mobile space? I think the real beauty of, of the 32 nanometer is that it allows us to have more and more capability in a smaller, smaller uh, die with you know, a greater performance characteristic. So the performance per watt per indicator or measure really goes up a lot. Um, our ultra low voltage parts are out there now, Penryn based, they're, they're great products. These are going to bring more performance into that ultra thin space though. Yeah. So as a recap, we're going to see more machines Intel powered, small form factors but with more power. Is that correct? You'll see a, a whole range of new products um, beyond the 20 something odd that we've already launched so far this year. You'll see um, everything from the beauty, our ultra low volt um, in ultra thin systems for the mainstream consumer all the way up to the beast the six core, 12 threaded beast um, for that enthusiast gamer audience. So thanks very much, Karen. We're going to see more Intel chips this year. We're going to see small form factor systems, huge machines, and everything in between. I'm most looking forward to reviewing the 980X, that six core monster we spoke about. So stay tuned for Hexus.net's review, and stay tuned for more coverage of CBIT 2010 on Hexus TV.